Well, hello, here we are in Kingston again. It's uh, March already, and it's time for the first update from the third crossing. Not going to take much time to talk about it today, but you can gather from my garb that the weather's been substantially better for the, the first part of this month anyway. And uh, if you like these videos, you find them informative and interesting, then please hit the like and consider subscribing to the channel. We'll talk to you uh, at the end. Let's start with the East End for a change. There's been significant activity aimed at preparing the ground for the roadway that will connect the new bridge to Highway 15. Some alterations to the public library grounds have been necessary, including removal of a few trees, which took place in October and November 2020, and realignment of the dry stone wall that surrounds the property. This is where it used to run on the west side of the library grounds up to meet Gore Road. About 60 feet has been temporarily removed to accommodate what will be a wider roadway. All the work has been effected with heritage values much in mind. Sections of the wall that have been removed will be replaced, albeit running east-west rather than north-south. Construction will be in the same style, using the same components as before. Delivery of gravel from quarries north of the city occurred for several days. The intent seems to be to create the upper end of the roadway that will lead to Highway 15. Both a bulldozer and a backhoe have been active and survey work has also been observed. Although there doesn't seem to be the high volume of deliveries of the steel sections that we see in girders on the other end of the site, preparation of the piers that will support them is very much in evidence, with caps being placed and final work on the pilings taking place almost daily. A third LR1300 crane has been added to the on-site inventory to advance these tasks. Closer to the middle of the bridge, concrete deliveries have been noted, keeping pace with project goals for girder installation outward from the west end. The volumes of concrete are significant, with several trucks keeping the delivery system busy for a day or two. Recognising that the whole project is working to a tightly organised and methodical schedule, the completion of the latest piers allowed delivery and placement of the fifth outside girders to occur. Eagle-eyed followers of the work will perhaps notice that there's a significant gap between girders 4 and 5, and what appears to be another platform or base. It's speculated that this could be to carry service ducts and pipes for the finished bridge. With just one interruption caused by high winds, the installation of the main bridge girders has continued with two arriving twice weekly, on a Monday and Wednesday. Installation, conditions permitting, takes place early on Tuesday and Thursday mornings. The desire from the outset to cause minimal environmental disruption means that clearances on the temporary causeway are tight. A slow and deliberate dance takes place on each occasion, with cranes, Bridget and Frigid moving aside to allow the girder transports to take position, then returning to the most stable lift positions when the tractor retires. Connecting the cables to each girder end demands close choreography between those who are lifted into place and the crane operators. When the lift begins, it is initially a very cautious process, with each girder rising vertically, then swinging into place, but offset from the last one, then closing the gap, and finally being lowered into position with the last few centimetres very closely monitored for exceptional accuracy of placement. Only when it's absolutely certain that positioning is correct do the operators make the final downward movement. Checks are conducted before the connecting cables are removed. That allows the cranes to be repositioned. When the cranes move back from a lift, the tractor can return and remove the rear transport dolly, which is towed backwards. For the nerds out there, there are 12 axles on each rig, not counting the two front steering wheels, and a total of 50 tyres. Recently, when outer girders were involved, the substantial movement of the cranes, which is undertaken very deliberately. Safety is paramount, 
and whenever equipments move, whatever their nature, ground guides keep careful watch. Well, there you go. That's the first report for March. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please, again, think about uh, hitting the like button below and consider subscribing to the channel. There'll be another on March 28th. And I look forward to meeting you all. Thanks for watching.